right, what's up, people? How's everybody doing tonight? So we have a special show planned for tonight. Um, I have a guest, and his name is Home Theater Man. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, Pen. I appreciate that. No problem. So I'm going to run through the comments before we get into the show. So hello, Ronster. How you doing? Nice to see you. Hey, Thunderhawk, I just replied to your comment you left on my platform. Appreciate you for coming through. Enjoy the show. Hey, Ian, how are you doing? What's up to you as well? Hey, Sharon, appreciate you for stopping by. And Tadal, hey, what's up, Tadal? Appreciate you. So I'm just going to share Home Theater Man's um, YouTube channel. And what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put the link in the chat. So in case any of you want to have a quick check, it is in the description as well. And um, we're just going to do it like this. Actually, mm -hmm. let me do this. Uh. It's the benefit of having two monitors, able to be a little bit more flexible. Yes, definitely. Um, okay, there we go. So I can share screen, share system audio. Okay. So this is Home Theaters Man's um, channel. And as you can see here, he has unboxings uh, going over HDMI cables, talking about the difference between fiber optic and HDMI. He has some good content on his platform. And when I commented on one of his videos, he said, hey, share this video, you know, with your friends. And I'm like, well, why not just feature you on my channel? He goes over the Astro installation. He games on the Xbox Series X. He has demos on his platform. Of course, we cannot share them here because of the terms of service. But if you guys are wondering um, what type of setup he have in more depth, he has a channel where he talks about it. So that's just one of the benefits of, um, you know, YouTubers, you know, they showcase their setup and you can learn more about uh, their display and things like that, their sound. And that's what I appreciate about him. He shows a lot and he does the demos and he has the background and the knowledge as well. So briefly, Home Theater Man, could you talk about um, your channel and um what you like to upload as far yeah. as in the future. Yeah. Um basically um I I saw the what copy in the home theater was actually um back in like 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Year 20, 2017, 2018. I saw it fall on this guy called the Rat the Laugh Cave. And, and I was like he had a very cool clip set up. I was like, okay, I really like that. He did some demos. I really liked that. So I got them on his channel and talked to him on his channel. And he actually inspired me to get my own system. So I, once I got about a job, I was able to save up enough money to get my own clip system. And um, so that's how I am now. And then I just thought, what the heck? Why don't I start making YouTube videos? See how I do. So uh, I was just like, um, okay. And sure enough, um, as soon as I, I was able to get um, enough subscribers on my YouTube channel um, by making the videos, um, I, I like, I, I just like, it's chalk. Like, I, I was like, uh, this turned out pretty well. So, I'm keep striving each, each time, I'm striving to get more subscribers and more, more, um, views on my channel. So, yeah, yes. And, um, that's how I discovered Home Theater Man. Also, was on the Rav Cave. If you go to my YouTube page and my, um, channel recommendation, I have Rav Cave listed. Um, as somebody who I watch. And the AV community here on YouTube, they like to showcase their tech, do their demos, and I know they are into the gaming scene also. So I figured yeah. for this collaboration, um, you know, let me just find some people that are passionate and, you know, they're willing to learn and share their knowledge with you guys as well. So we're going to get into the presentation. You may ask questions. During the presentation, we will not get to them until afterwards. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen there before that. 
Hey, what's up, Bix? How you doing, man? Salute, salute. Okay, cool. What's up, Thunderhawk? How you doing? Yes, shout out to Thunderhawk. Yep, definitely shout out to Thunderhawk. Shout out to everybody who's in the chat. All right. So this is the um, introductory of the setup. And, you know, talk about this space briefly, uh, about how you position it with your speakers. Um, just everything looks clean here as far as Thank what you. we see in the frame. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I um, actually got Geek Squad to install my home theater system. Uh, I didn't do installation myself with that. Well, for, for me being new, I didn't have a clue how to cut drywall. or I could cut drywall. That's not a problem. But um, just installing the wires, I didn't have a clue how to do that stuff. It's something special to help me do that. So I called just Geek Squad. Geek Squad did a really good job of um, installing my home theater system. But the best way, honestly, the best way you can do a home theater system is going to the wiring. Which is inside the walls. That looks the cleanest, in my opinion. Hmm. Okay, so you you went the convenience route. You paid Geek Squad to um set up your system and do all the wiring and have it be professionally, you know, set up. Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Cool. Those are my Atmos. Oh, go ahead. I apologize. Oh no no! I just want to tell the viewers that sure. he has a, a actual Atmos setup to where the speakers are in the ceiling, so you can talk about that yourself. Yeah, uh, I got um, I'm running uh, what's called a seven dot two dot four, which means seven speakers around the room, two subwoofers, and four internal speakers. Um, honestly, what I learned after I got my home theater set up is honestly I could have did without the sound backs. Just did a five point one four. Instead, it would save me a lot, but lot, lot, it would save me a lot of money. But instead, I went. I didn't know what I was doing. I got a seven dot two dot four because it, I mean, in the long run, it's gonna matter. In the long run, it, it can help you out. But it's just, it's just that a lot of movies are not filmed, and like the movies have to be filmed in like seven dot two, like seven dot one or seven dot two, or you, for you to actually watch, or to, for you to actually play a um movie that's um, full surround sound. I mean, most of the movies, of, if, if you look on the disc, it'll say, like, mm -hmm. film the 5.1 or something like that, and that's what you're, you're going to be playing. So even though I have a 7.2.4 home theater system, I'm only technically, my, when I'm playing a movie, it's through my Panasonic Wheel Player, it's only playing a 5.14, so... Okay, so you recommend for anyone that's interested to have to price their budget towards the source material so that they're yeah. not overspending and blowing yep. the budget. Okay, great. Yeah. So for anyone that know anybody that's trying to get into this, um, tell them to start simple and they can expand. There's nothing wrong with that, but just be careful of the budget. You don't want to go over. So that was excellent info. Thank you. Um, that, um, these three photos are actually, you guys noticed, um, my, that middle photo I'm holding, that's my mono price, um, uh, a fiber optic HDMI cable. Um, I went through like, gosh, like three of those cables, they kept busting on, I couldn't figure out why they kept busting on me. The glass inside kept busting, it's five, because it's fiber optic, kept busting. If you guys look on the right hand side of my, um, picture, where it shows the green HDMI cables, those are really pro cables, so I'll get to that in a minute. Um, if you guys know, look carefully behind my rack, I have a spine, like a spine that goes the whole way down my rack. Well, because that spine being down my rack, it's like, like my HMI cables will hit the tip of my HMI cable was on my monoparts was hitting, um, my AV receiver and it was hitting the, um, spinal cord of my AV rack that holds the whole thing together is causing my fiber optic to break. So I learned. Uh, I mean, I like Louis really Paul. They're good, but just they're not as flimsy, uh, not as flexible as let's just say Louis really Paul is. Louis really Paul HMI cable is really flexible. That's what I like about Louis really Paul. I was actually sponsored in one of my videos by Louis really Paul. They sent me three cables. Yeah, that was very nice for them to do that. I did some research on those cables, and uh, they're definitely of quality. Definitely got to do your research, but it was nice that the company reached out to you and um, yeah, you know, 
helped you in your um your home theater tour lab. Pretty sweet. Oh yeah, thank you. Those are those are those are different colors. Those are the one colors of my um. It could change blue, green. I went up my Xbox Series X. I turn my LED lights at night to green. If I'm playing movies, I'll play it to like red or blue. Hmm. Just well, not even that. Like if I, it depends on how mood of I mood I am in. Most of the time, I actually love playing movies and the, just the white LED lights I have on my back of my TV. Um, the white LED lights. If you watch a movie, you have a good enough TV. It will actually bring out the contrast and the colors make it more pop more. When you want when you have white LED lights behind your TV, and actually the um, the um. Or this, I'm to think, this is, um, anyways, um, this is a company, um, like, basically hi-fi, like, hi-fi, I, I guess it's hi-fi, I don't know what you call it, but somebody, I don't know what, I read it a while back on an article, this is a certain company that, um, recommends using white LED lights for hmm. reference, for reference lineup, you want reference, use white LED lights, I guess that's the name I'm looking for, yep. Okay. But hey, the the effect is uh, pretty cool looking, especially with the picture. You know, Thank of course, you. We're, we're getting the compressed version, but yeah, um, you're right. It, it 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 does pop out the picture, and you know, pops gives gives you the contrast that you may be looking for. Mm -hmm. And um, hey, yeah. it's, it's a cool effect. Not for everybody, but if you want mm -hmm. to, it's pretty yeah. Cool. Those are my RP8000 speakers. I'm running what's called the reference premier lineup. I'm sure I didn't say that right. The reference premier lineup. It's a Clips lineup. Um, that's my front stage. Here. I got the Clips 504C center. And beside, below it is my RP8000 towers. That's just one of my club speakers. Um, my RP8000 tower. And on the right is actually what my, my actual speakers came in. That's actually how they delivered to me on delivered my speakers. Hmm. That's what it had box. It was really neat, really neatly wrapped up. It is all wrapped. It was all wrapped up, um, really nicely in black on uh, wrap wrap. I ripped that open and took picture of it. Yeah. Cool. And this is uh another view of the speaker setup, and I, I like the fireplace. As well, you know, makes it a little bit more, you know, home cozy feel to it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That if you um, if you look at the fireplace at one below that, if you, I'm not sure you guys can see below, a little closer underneath the mantle that stands out. I, me and my dad actually made that mantle. We um bought a piece of wood from Lowe's. We the, the mantle itself was only like I don't know half a, it was only like a couple inches wide, like send it out wide we got what my dad did was we actually got a piece of uh, board from Lowe's that was actually already painted white the same color as the mantle so what we did was we um drilled holes through the top of the mantle to the top of the wood and then we drilled it into the mantle to make it extend out more that's how we able to get my center speaker on there now it is flimsy like you can't lean on it, you can't. Uh, or you can't you can lean on it, but you can't like um put your weight on it because they'll bust. What I'm gonna do this summer is I'm actually gonna get rods and I'm gonna drill holes up into the um top of the below the underneath the mantle. I'm gonna drill under the white part of the fireplace. That way, it's like these rods hold it up for strong, more strength. I just have to find time to do that this summer. That's my Eclipse 504C. Cool, so. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Definitely quality stuff. Yeah, Clips is uh definitely in a lot of home theaters. So if you guys look into Clips, you'll <laughs> you'll know why. <laughs> you know, one, one person I recommend for Clips is Corey Harrison for um, Clips Dealer. If you go on a good Clips system or any type of system, I, have, I highly recommend going to a dealer. I mean, you save a lot, a little bit of money that way. It depends on what you get. Like if you get B stock or used, you save a lot of money. If you get it new, you save quite a bit of money too, still too. Um, yeah. That's my yeah. right there. My clips. Um, what's I mean? That's my SPL one fifty subwoofers. Actually, got two of them. They're fifteen inches. 
um, 15 inches. Um, the bottom, the bottom last picture is my RP 500 SA. They're my Dolby Atmos speakers. I actually don't have them use the Dolby Atmos. I can, as I'm, I has I have them use the surround back. There's actually a toggle switch on the back of those, those speakers that allows you to switch from either Dolby Atmos or surround back. That's pretty cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty flexible. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, various equipment, cheer. Yep. That was my Astro A40 TR headset. That's what I used the game with stuff. Anyways, um... That that's my gaming chair. Anyways, my my gaming chair I actually gave away this past Christ, last Christmas. Gave to a kid who did not have anything who wanted a gaming chair for his bedroom. So I I just gave it to him for free for his Christmas gifts. I didn't even know this kid. I just uh, gave it to him as a, a gift, like help him out. That's awesome because Thank the quality you. gaming chair. Uh, I mean that could. Just budget wise, it can be uh up there for um some people. So that was yeah. very thoughtful of you for um giving away for free. Thank that's, you, I appreciate it. That's nice. Thank you. That's why right there on the right is my Logitech Pro my Logitech Pro twenty four hundred remote control. Very nice remote control, I love it. Um does it it's basically the whole it controls my entire home theory system. You can, you can even control if I wanted to. You can even control my LED lights. I have lights inside the ceiling. The colored lights, like red, green, blue. I can even control the lights, LED lights, done my ceiling with that remote control as well. But I don't have that, so I don't have to worry about it. Those, if you guys know, those are my uh, Vipo HDMI cable boxes. Uh, those are the ones Vipo is the one that sponsored me for my YouTube channel. Um, um, they sent me three of them. Um, one is um, one of the cable is a CL two rated in black at a fifty foot net. Another two, the other two, the other one is a um, a ten foot. Another one is a um, six foot. I do believe. Nice. And actually, one my six foot busted on me, and they actually it was nice enough. They sent me two more cables for free. I sent email and said, "Hey, my cable's busted." Uh, is there anything? Is there anything you replace it? And I said, "Yeah. How many you need? How many do you want me to send?" I said, "I just send me two, I guess. So I have an extra one in case one breaks." So okay. the one on the right hand side is actually a brand new box. It's not even open yet. Pretty cool customer yeah. service. I like that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's my DVD rack. What's, if you guys noticed, my DVD rack is actually supposed to be laying down, but it, it, like in, the, in that small little space, I, don't have, I just got it a couple weeks ago, uh, and it don't fit well in my um in that little area. If you notice, my DVD rack is right there. I gotta figure out a different place in you know, my home theater to put it. I still have to find the time to do it. I've been working so much. Fridays are like my only day off for work, but um. Like basically, I ha it is another half of my DVD rack that is actually upstairs in my bedroom, behind my other TV. I got a 50 inch Vizio 4K TV. This is basic. Now my literally my um other half of my DVD rack is behind there. It does not fit in that little area. It's just so big. I think it holds like my DVD rack holds like t like 1800 DVD, like 1800 uh, DVDs. I think like 2500 Blu-rays or something like that. It holds a pretty good amount. Hmm. Yeah. Quite a bit. Okay. It's a lot bigger than it looks. Like when it's built to, it's not. When it's built together. It's a lot bigger than it looks. Yeah, it's a lot wider. Cool. Like, I literally have a standing on the side right now. I have the DVD rack standing on the side, so that's why. Look, that's why it looks like that. Yeah. I thought it was a pretty cool shot you sent me. Thank you. Um. The movie on the far left. That is my um Harry Potter steelbook collection. I got the Harry Potter eight four. I got the, I got the Harry Potter. I think it's eight film series collection. Very nice. Actually, got it one to bid on eBay. I got it on eBay. So I missed the sale at Best Buy, and everybody was selling on eBay. So I actually bid on it, and I won it through eBay. Mm. So yeah, and on the beside that is the Avengers. 
still bought, still bought 4K movie collection. They got the Band of Brothers um, still book as well in Blu-ray. Also, um, the um, Pacific Rim is... Oh, not Pacific Rim. I'm not sorry. The Pacific and still book. If you haven't seen those two TV series, I highly recommend it because it is, it's also a good demo for your home theater system. Sounds amazing. Nice. Yep. Hmm. All right. And if you guys know this one... Go ahead. I apologize. If you oh, guys know this one, right... I uh, apologize. Uh, if you guys know something right, actually, when I got my TV, my Q90 TV, I had only had like a 10 foot, 10, 15 foot um, fiber optic cable to my TV. Like, my, basically, the Q90 TV was the last, but it was the very last TV you can get a one connect box in. Which, uh, if, you don't want, if you don't know what a one connect box is, all your HDMI ports and everything are connected in the back of your HDMI in the one connect box. With that one cable on the right hand side, the picture I sh- he was showing you la- earlier in the photo was my. I got a, a 50 foot one connect cable to allow me to put my one connect box on my AV rack but because before I had it on my mantle and it looked messy there with all the wires hanging down. But good, what did you want to say, um, Pan? Oh, um, just on a comment of that you made on the specific that uh yeah i did hear that that was good reference material so i will be checking that out myself okay thank you here's some cool demo shots you sent thank you man i appreciate it. i actually went on actually find those on youtube just went up youtube and looked up 4k demos you can find 4k and 8k demos on youtube yeah yeah, if you guys were wondering what what I actually what I used to make YouTube videos with, I use my cell phone. I use my my I got a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra cell phone. It's like a, it's like a six got like a six point nine inch touch screen, a very nice one, big phone. Um, but I use everything. I use that to film my videos and stuff. Before I had a Samsung Galaxy Note 8, and honestly, my Note 8 coming from a Note Galaxy Note 8. To a Note 20 Ultra, absolutely huge difference in um, picture quality and everything all, all around. Big performance in the phones compared to a Note 8 to a Note 20 Ultra. The phones came a long way compared to those times. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 That's a, uh, a a noticeable difference for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So talk about. Um... Your situation with game mode, so the audience, maybe there's some people that's experiencing this, and you know, yeah, give a little bit of tips on this. So basically, um, what I always recommend when buying a, a expensive ass TV, or even a like a Blu-ray player, or Arc receiver, or a receiver, or anything like that, please get the maximum warranty you guys can get, or there's a five-year warranty, or or, or six-year warranty. Get that maximum highest warranty you guys can get. Cause I made this mistake big time. This is, well, back in 2019, Q90 RT was incredibly expensive. Not only that, but the warranty was outrageous. Warranty was like five, six hundred dollars for a t- for just for a warranty, five year warranty at the time. But they have the money to get a five year warranty, so I got a three year warranty, take three or four year warranty instead. Well, this past last April, my warranty just expired, and Samsung got screwed my TV up in the firmware update, which fried parts of my motherboard. Anyways, um, that's why my if you guys notice up on top, I have a, a off game mode. I got a, a, auto, I got a game mode on. That up top is my game mode is actually grayed out. Well, I have a, what's called an auto game mode. This allows me to like turn on switch on the console. It switches the TV into game mode automatically, so I don't have to automatically don't worry, I don't have to put put it around and put it on. By itself manually, but game mode is grayed out. So and I, I like I called Samsung. They they sent a um repair guy out. They couldn't find me a one kind of box or a um a panel for my TV. So they they were just said okay, we'll upgrade you for free. Well, I didn't hear back from Samsung in a while. Uh, so I called them back. I they brought me up with the case manager. I was like, okay, where's my new TV at? Like, oh, by the way, you don't qualify for a new TV. Because you um don't have a warranty anymore. You want to expire this past April. Like crap. You gotta be kidding me. So um 
all, and all they want to do, literally all Samsung want to do is give me like eleven hundred dollars for my TV. They only want to give me eleven hundred dollars for it and cat and and, and check and then they want to take away my TV. So I mean, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. So I was buy, I'm gonna save them by a whole new TV here soon. I'm actually okay. I'm thinking about going with the Sony next. The the OLEDs or their LEDs. Um, well, I see. I'm looking at the two different models. I'm looking at the depends on how good the new Sony um LED looks. So uh, mini LED, I might get go with that six five inch. I only really want to get a seventy seven inch OLED or a um some seventy five inch TV. Apparently, the Sony's don't make a um seventy five inch in the mini LED yet. They only make a six five as high as you can go. In the 2022 lineup, so I might just go with. I might actually saw a demo of some someone doing a YouTube video on on the um, unboxing of the LG C2. It looks absolutely beautiful, so I'm actually might get a the LG C2. Oh yeah, that's my quality. Yes, um, that's my um Xbox Series X console. I show you guys. You guys saw in the video earlier, picture earlier. Um, it, it had um. I got thin blue line, um, um, vinyl wrap on it. Cause I'm actually a, a trying to become a double, double, county deputy sheriff reserve officer. And we, um, it's, so I mean, it should be fun. I, I go to I go to do some more training in a in April, at the end of April here. Um, so yeah, um, but that's those are my LED lights. I got several colors. I also got I also got um base lights as well. My my Xbox Series X got the base lights as well. Which if you guys go to my video on my channel, you guys can you can see uh, how I installed it, and you guys can also see how I, it's just, honestly to install the LED lights is way easier than I thought it was. Look, watch other people do it; it looks like complicated. For me, it was really easy to install the LED lights. I mean, what I, and yes, I highly recommend. You wait till your warranty expires on your Xbox Series X console. It's saw the LED D lights, which is what I did. Wait for my warranty expires. So I saw literally I installed these LED D lights when I had COVID back in December. I had COVID back in December, and I literally was like, "Okay, I'm not doing anything." So I go and install these LED lights while I'm at it. And um, I'm one thing I want to talk about is I'm actually I'm going to be upgrading my AV rack here soon. I only got a um a um five shelf AV rack. I'm actually you know, going to um, get the strong FS series. Uh, I might go. I'm having trouble deciding whether to go with the 27 U or go with the 35 U. I might just go with the 35 U, so I have some extra space in my rack to for extra extra activities, um stuff like that. Um yeah. Oh, Okay, that's my yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it. Those are my if you want a picture in the middle with my LED light controller. I also use control my LED lights on my TV. Yep. Also I have two more controllers that came with my LED lights. My Xbox Series X. I got two more controllers that came with each LED lights. Like for my, my fan lights and for my base lights. So yeah. And um, once again, if you guys want more information, I'm going to paste this channel again. It's also in the description so that you can actually uh, see him go more in depth on his tech, his demos. And um, guys, check him out. Thank Good you channel. very much. I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, um, hopefully this summer. That's, that's actually the tra trailer to deliver my speaker system. As, as the all in personal carrier, they actually delivered my speakers to my house when I ordered through Paducah Home Theater. That's what I got my speakers through. I got it through Paducah Home Theater. Um, the uh, um, dealer out in Paducah, Kentucky. The owner's a really nice guy. Really, well, really great to work with. Excellent. I highly recommend them. If you want to get a system, they sell like um, clip speakers, SVS. Uh, they, they have a YouTube channel as well. You, I think it's called. I think it's called Paducah Home Theater. If you search them on YouTube, you can find them. Okay, they do so, different demos and stuff. Yeah, I, I heard of um, their channel along with the SVS setup. And yeah. Yeah, it's some um, different brands out there, and there's, there's different ways to achieve um, similar results of what you can find on YouTube. So 
it's nice to have options in this field. Yeah. For sure. One thing one thing I want to recommend to you guys is if you guys think clips is too harsh on your ears and bleeding making your ears bleed, I could always recommend SVS, which is one step up from clips. SVS, what is good about SVS is the sound is not nearly as harsh as clips is. You guys can understand what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't sound like you're making your, like, it doesn't sound as loud. But so it sounds, it sounds more natural, I guess you'd say. Like, like the mids and highs are a lot better on the SVS. And also the lows are a lot better on the SVS and the clips. So, I mean, as SVS is a lot, but so a lot of people will buy clips, you know, try SVS, and it turns out they like them. Yeah, how I see it, it comes down to um, budget and personal preference. Yeah. Like what, what type of style look you're going for. Um, yep. I miss some, I'll say hello to some people. Sure. I'm going to hey, chat what's right up, now. Skulls? How you doing? What's up, Monster TV? How you doing? What's up, Tim? Nice to see you, Tim. What's up, Skulls? How you doing? Home automation is key to help with home theater. I see some stuff that people can do out of this world with their voice. Yes. <laughs> home automation nice. is nice. Yeah, have definitely. you uh, have something similar to home automation or are you going to be having a fully home automation setup? You know, what's your plans with that? You talking to me? Yes. Okay. Um, say again, what was the question? I can't find it. Um, I have it up top on StreamYard. Oh, uh, hold, hold on. Click out. I see it. Okay. This is what home automation was to help with theaters. And, uh, I'm not too big into home automation, I guess, with uh, lights and stuff. But, like, uh, it's always good to have, uh, I guess, you know, I know it's always actually tried home automation, like, can, like it's also on LED lights inside my ceiling and stuff. I'd like to do that eventually down the road. Um, But, um, just, um, yeah. Thunderhawk giving you some props. Thank you, yeah, Thunderhawk. For sure, man. Give a sh big shout out to Thunderhawk. If you have guys, if you guys haven't watched his channel, he's a pretty amazing guy. He does a lot of good different um, PlayStation games on his live streams. Oh, cool. Yep. Skulls mentioned that's a nice thing to do, home theater. It's a nice project. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. The scores, um, thank you, so I appreciate that. Anytime. Okay, so let's get into um, <clears throat> your experiences, you know, with home theater. We can start with the movies as far sure. as, uh, you know, just what's your reference titles? Um, maybe my top, movie? like, top, like, um, favorite movies. Yeah, well, we can, we can do top five. As far as reference, sure. 4K reference or Blu-ray um, in general. Yeah, one of the was to my top probably one number two top movies. One number one favorite movie I recommend is Overlord. If you ever seen that movie? The first five minutes are absolutely insane on that movie. So much LFE, it's not even funny. Uh, basically, in the first five minutes, uh, no spoilers. The planes they actually push out of the plane. It's like where they crash. Like literally, um, literally, um. My subs are like shaking the entire house. I mean, I come upstairs to get a drink one day. It was, it was shit rattling on the kitchen cabinet and stuff. Everything's rattling like crazy. Like, oh crap. That's, uh, that's a really good movie I highly recommend. Yeah, I, I might check this out after Pacific Rim. Too. It, it, it's a really good movie. Um, Yeah. It's just, it's, it's insane. That first five minutes, absolutely insane. Like literally, like my ears feel my ears after watching the movie. My ears feel like it was percussed, like I uh, like percuss You know, you go to a concert, a huge concert, like a, a Luke Bryan or Kenny Chesney, or even a hip hop concert, and all that loud bass in your ears, and you feel ears feel like it's percussed. Hmm. Like, like that's why my ears felt after this movie. It's insane. Um. That's second, cool. my second favorite movie is Pacific Rim. That the picture quality over overall is absolutely beautiful in that Pacific Rim movie. Um, picture quality and the bass, even the sound, everything sounds so amazing. It sounds like you're actually in the movie. 
I mean, everything, all these movies, it sounds like you're in a movie. Really, yeah. really nice. Pacific Rim was uh, the first one. It was great. Yeah. Sound great. on the... Uh, got a nice HDR. Oh, yeah. Got beautiful HDR, too. Yeah. Um, Another good movie, not so much push quality-wise, but what I love about this one movie I'm about to tell you guys next is this called... Uh, it's not really my top five movies. I don't really watch it at all. But, I mean, the... It's called um, Battleship. If you guys haven't seen Battleship, that's a very good movie. Um, you can probably find it. That's a good movie. Like, literally, when they're on the um, pl- the plane deck, when the not plane deck, the um, I'm saying the 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 battleship deck, and the they're saluting the the oldest Korean soldiers saluting the new Navy guys. They play that music come up. Anyways, the planes fly overhead. You just hear, you just, you literally can hear the which way, you actually hear which way the planes are actually coming from in your home theater system. It's amazing. Like, like if it's coming to the right, you hear a plane coming to the right of the, like, it's very cool. Hmm, but my, um, positions in it. Okay. Yeah. Too. If you want a good demo movie for push quality, best push quality, I highly recommend watching 1917. I, yeah. Oh my god, the picture quality looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's stunning. Um, that's a. It's uh, also the story is pretty good too. If you have, if it's slow. Yes, it's a slow movie, but it picks up a little bit in the beginning, like in the middle of the movie, then picks, really picks up at the end. It's, a, it's just a good storyline they made. Um, I thought it was good. Yeah. Like that, like I call that. Also, I call that picture ref, reference picture line picture. The reference, it's just, it's just reference quality, I think. Yeah, for me too. Uh, it, it's not an upscale film, it's native. No. So, yeah. Y- you'll want to watch this at the highest quality. Yeah. Lily actually did some research about this movie in 1917. They used like a, uh, a, a um, I think it was like an $850,000 camera just to make the movie. <laughs> it I mean, looks... it's, rid- it's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. I, I read that somewhere, I was like, holy shit. That's over a half million dollar camera, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yep. I, I, I just love uh, now the only better version than this is on the uh-huh. Kaleidoscape, but that thing is. Yeah, that's Picasso, that's pretty good. Extremely suspensive. Yeah, Kaleidoscape, pretty much no, a lot of people can't afford Kaleidoscape unless you're rich. Um, I mean, I could probably get it, but I just save, really save my money to get it, Um, to get a good Kaleidoscape. But for now, I just love my physical media. And what I love, right. that's another thing I want to talk about. We'll talk about it in a second. I want to get to movies still. Um, that's that's my um, second favorite movie. It, third favorite movie is 1917. My fourth one is probably um, probably the probably um, the Equalizer. Have you guys seen the Equalizer? If you guys haven't seen that, that's a really yeah. good movie. I've seen both of those titles. Picture yeah. quality looks outstanding on that movie. Crystal clear, everything as well. Sounds sounds amazing, music and everything. Yeah, Equalizer was good. Yeah, I like Man on Fire from Disney. Oh, that's a good movie yeah. too. I got that on, on DVD. Yeah, that yeah. Man on Fire. It's, it's amazing. Uh, yep. Yeah, and one thing I, I can recommend to you guys is if, is getting either the pan if you want a good Blu-ray player, get the Panasonic four twenty or the. Panasonic 820. Those are my top two Blu-ray players. Now the Panasonic 420, it only does HDR 10 plus. So if you want some, if you want a Blu-ray player that does both HDR 10 plus and Dolby Vision, then I recommend the Panasonic 820. And it's really good price. I mean, I, I mean, I got I got a five-year warranty on that. Um, through Geek Squad Protection. Um. And the, Basically, if you guys don't know about the Panasonic A20 and the, the Panasonic Blu-ray players in general, they use what's called a um a processor that they use to film the movies with. The processor that's in the Panasonic is you they actually use that to film the most movies with in Hollywood. Um, yeah, Dude, and the processor is outstanding on the Panasonic. I'm I'm currently I'm talking with um. Raven with um Raven um to try get a, I'm trying to get in for a view a um the Raven XBR 
200 XPR 200 I do believe it is called I'm trying to get that in for you currently hmm. okay so you reach out or company I'll like, actually reach out to this company us. Okay, okay. Yeah. and you guys go back and forth, man. Yeah, okay. I emailed them this. Yeah, um, I emailed them. So the Charlie, see, they want to wait till the plan is just be a new formal update happening. It's just do uh on the 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 Raven Wave on. I think it's called Wave on, the Wave on um XPR two hundred. It's just be a formal update. It's just to improve the dashboard on that Blu-ray player. Well, they said once that they do that form update to put dashboard and then do some other form updates, that's when they'll be wanting to send me that Blu-ray player and so I can do a product review on it, a full review. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I'll be on the lookout for that if everything goes well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. But uh, let's get back in the movies. Um, my my um, fifth favorite movie is probably... um. There's just so many good movies. I have to think about which one is good. Um, uh, Fifth favorite movie is probably um I have to say um I'm trying to I I'm trying to uh, I have to say um there's so many good movies I can't choose which one uh, yeah which, yes what's up Bama fan Shout yeah out what, hey what's up Bama man fan how you doing um to please I I just really don't know there's so many good movies I mean out there right now. Yeah, it's just hard, hard to choose from, you know what I'm saying? Just I can suggest um okay, just one of the reference materials for me would be the Aquaman. Huh? You saw that one? Yeah, I said Aquaman. I have the, oh yeah, I have that on four K Blu ray as well. I just okay. got a steel book. That's a really good movie. I have that as well. That's probably like it's probably like my um fifth favorite. It's push core looks really good. Everything looks stunning, especially in the ocean. It's just oh, awesome. Just, just the, the scenes, like definitely, yeah, definitely check out Aquaman if you haven't seen it or really good saw, movie, like a high quality version of it. It yeah. just looks stellar. Oh yeah, uh, it's, it's it's absolutely amazing. Have you checked out that uh, Alita Battle Angel? You know, no, I have not seen too. that yet. Is, I want to see it. Is it good? Yeah, it's. Uh, I- it goes back to the reference of, I, I believe, uh, a Japanese manga. Wow, like, cool. You know, which is this inspired by? Don't quote me on that. That's uh-huh. why you see like the, the anime look. In the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, they're referencing, you know, that original, you know, source uh-huh. material here. Nice, real cool. That's awesome. Another great movie. I have to watch that. It looks really good. I did uh, one a movie of it on my um, panel too on my channel. Nice. Hey, what other movie I can recommend is I really absolutely love is um, what's that called? Um, it's like where they go. It's like I don't describe. It's like where they like these kids kids go and I I don't have it, but I I see I'm I'm going on 4K Blu-ray with my disc book the third way. My dog shoot it when it's a puppy. Uh, it's like where they go into the future. They have to like um. That's like um, win this game. It's like that's win this like game. Um, like in this game thing, like to like win. Um, uh, it's got. I'm trying to think what it's called. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I have on top of my head, but I can't remember. But it's a really good movie as well. Mm-hmm. Another good movie I highly recommend if you if you haven't seen it is Midway. A extremely good movie, Midway. Okay. Yeah, I got this one. I have to watch it myself. It's amazing. I mean, the 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 um the um the um Alfie Alfie you know, is amazing. Extremely high base, first five minutes of um, bombing is just absolutely incredible. Um, it sounds like oh no, shooting the pain shooting. You hear bullets paint all around you. Oh, Paul, crazy. Um, this looks crazy. Yeah, this is a very good movie. Actually, I have my number one favorite movie. I, I just realized my number one favorite movie is an actually an older film. I say it's probably my top number one film for this one, and it's called Seven Pilot Lion in uh, 4K. Classic. Yeah. That's actually I take that as number one, absolutely number one top film. Yes, it's got grain. It does have a lot of grain in it. But that's why the creators tend to want to want you to look see it as if you take it with a grain, they won't be as good as a movie. The D Day um, part, absolutely insane. Like my subs were shaking. 
the whole house. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Even the ending was awesome. Like when they were battling at the um, yeah. at the ending there. Yeah, just overall good movie. Highly recommended. I'd say that's yeah. the number top one movie. If I ever got that in a 4K movie, I highly recommend you get that. I say that's right there, my top number one movie right there, Saving Pat Ryan. Just so much good bass, the toy's good, the picture quality looks outstanding, it's just amazing. Yeah, actually Saving had that, Pat Ryan is a demo, probably top yes. three for most people. Yeah, yep. Definitely, yep. Um, um, check the chat here. Anybody have any questions for Home Theater Man? Hey, Brooklyn, how you doing? Nice to see you. Hey, Andre. Nice to see you in here. Anybody have any questions on, well, the people that just joined, um, you will have to watch the replay. What we went through, um, Home Theater Man set up. He sent me some pictures. I put it together for this presentation so that we can, um, you know, talk about his AV equipment and his experiences. And... Um, if you guys are wondering, my AV receiver is Anki or TXRZ1100. It's a 9.2 channel. But if I you want to dot two dot four with it, if you get a a, um, a two channel amplifier, I'm running a Amativia five Base X A five hundred to run my swan backs. That's uh, on Anki. That's why they want you to run your swan backs. You get extra um two channels. If you guys have any questions, somebody just bring it up in the chat and I'll look at it. Yeah, and selecting a good receiver is a uh, good place to start for sure. Yeah, I actually got my receiver on a really good deal. I only paid eleven hundred dollars for it. It does like it does up to one hundred forty watts per channel. Mm-hmm. And honestly, um, I really don't need a, a, a external amplifier to push up my front stage. But my my system gets so loud down there; it's not even funny. And I'm 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 probably only pushing like. 75 80 watts with my receiver. I just just guess it just gets so loud on there. Um, I keep I even did a video recently of what I keep my system at. I keep my front stage at at um 7.5 at some point it's 7.5 dB is what I keep my front stage at. My surround sides I keep them at um I keep them at um I think it's like five point that five, five point zero. I think I keep them at. Then my mm-hmm. swan backs. I keep them at um three point five. My clips, two clips, SP one fifties. I keep those a little bit higher. So I like the I like a lot of bass. So um I keep them at um six point five dB. Some people say it's it's um it's a lot really loud. But honestly, like like he was saying, when watching movies is good. And with uh, keeping at six point five dB is good for both movies and music and playing music as well. So like, like before, I had my um my uh, my clips SPL one fifty subwoofers down to like two point five dB levels positive. I keep it at positive, by the way. Everything in my home theater is positive. Uh, my okay. um dB dB is a positive. I, it sounds so much better that way. I think. Yeah, and it's, it's going to come down to your tolerance level and your personal preference also. Yeah. So, so everybody's setup is different. And Y'all like it loud. Let's put it that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's it's about the experience at the end of the day, right? So Definitely, yeah, yep, yep. Question, yep. Um, since I don't see any in the chat currently. So you're a fan of physical media. Yeah. Do you plan in the future just for, well, just do you plan on ripping your media and looking into different avenues like the Zoom? Does it, uh, does it do it's a pity, or are you fine with the 4K Blu ray player and the disc? I'm always just fine with the 4K Blu ray player and the disc. I think it just sounds so much, I think it sounds really good for its quality and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and um, basically, um I mean, the, if this is this way, look at it, streaming your movies and also um, watching on the 4K Blu-ray player. The two do uh, they two totally different um things. Like the bit rate on the reason why a lot of people say the Blu-ray player sounds a lot better versus streaming 
It's because the, on the blu play, the, the bit rate is so much higher than the streaming quality. Yes. Um, that's right. Like stuff like movies anywhere, iTunes, that's going to give you a good streaming quality compared to what you would typically see on Vudu and Netflix. But if you want the best quality that you can afford, the 4K disc is where it's at. And the absolute best quality that's going to cost you the premium price is the Kaleidoscape. Yeah, d- definitely. But yeah, it's... um. His choices and options for everybody. Um, just I don't knock streaming. I, I just don't like what some of these companies be doing with their bit rates. It, yeah, it, same it with me. Sit well with me. Yeah. Do you um? Do you like physical media, Pen? Or do, you, do. Are you prefer streaming? So here's how I, I prefer um, my stuff. Like I, I'm digital all the way with games, and uh-huh. um. When it comes to movies and shows, I prefer yeah. the compress on some things, but for demo material, I get huh. uncompressed. I store it. Yeah. Things. So it's nice. stuff like okay. Aquaman, the yep. um, Battle Angel Alita. You know, nice. it's all my reference material I have backed up on my Synology. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I get the reference copy. So it's the same nice. copy that you will find on a 4K Blu-ray. It's just the nice. video audio and subtitle information i just need the mkv cool i'm not i'm not really big into in, in, mkv down download ripping the disc i'm not really big into that because i never really did that before I, I would like to learn how to do that someday is it easy or is it like complicated would you say um i wouldn't call it complicated there's plenty of resources available for free on youtube there's forms so um, there's oh. people, what I find is that there's people that's willing to help you if you want to get from point A to point B. But oh. it's not, I, I will say this live, it's not hard to acquire a one-to-one reference. It's, it's not yeah. Hard okay, that's good. It's, that's it's, good it's to know. Not, I mean, there's ways you can do it Yeah. quicker or, you know, longer. It just depends on, you know, your preference. But oh. there's definitely, definitely options there. Yeah, um, one thing I want to bring up to you guys, I've had to mention you guys earlier and doing the um, showing my demos. Um, is when you get it anytime you add a, a separate amplifier, I highly recommend you, you should do, um, keep everything unplugged before I actually made this mistake when I first got my amplifier and I tried to install it myself and learned to know that, that I, I lost short, lost all my. I lost all like my wires went short and my receiver. So if you don't unplug the res- the back of the receiver for the wall, or if and you don't plug don't pl- and if you keep the and if you um keep the the amplifier plugged in, if you keep them both plugged in and just plug start plugging shit in, you will get a short in your wires and your um your will receive a cord. Which means if you get a short, then your receiver will not turn on. Like it almost goes like in a protection mode. I actually thought that's what happened. So I actually sent my receiver out to Arkeo and they tried to fix it and as soon as they got a new when they, as soon as they plugged it in, like it works just fine. I'm like, that's weird. I that's what I did do it. I said I tried to plug in my um with my amplifier to my receiver. Like, did you unplug it before you did it? I was like, No. Like that's the issue because y- y- if you don't unplug your receiver in your amplifier when you're connecting them, you're going to, you know, short. There's just some complex things you can run into. You don't know what you're doing for home theater. That's why I always recommend, if you're new to home theater, just for the time being, get someone that knows how to install your home theater. It, like, this is my opinion. Is if you guys need, if you guys need someone to install your home theater, you can ask me, and I can research the best person I know will install your home theater. You guys are looking to someone in your area to install your home theater. That's, like, I'm on a group called on HR Tempest Double Vision users on Facebook. And people always ask me, like, what, like, who do I get to install my home theater? Like, and I, I just research it. A lot of people don't do enough research. They just ask other people. I recommend doing your own research, and if you can't find a solution, then ask someone. Wait, wait, wait. You repeat that one more time. <laughs> apologize. Apologize. My fault. No, no, no. I, 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 I say it like that because you know uh-huh. that is something that 
you know, most of content creators are going to say, but I just like how you said it because it's the most crucial part about this. Thank you. Process. I appreciate it. That's what Thank I you. mean, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The basic thing I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm doing it right now, I apologize. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so I'm going to get my life out of the way here. So what I, what I recommend is, if you, if you what do you do your research? <laughs> what do you do your research? If you, like, we really dig into it deep, you find do as much research as you can. It, of, of all hell breaks loose, you can't find the option, then to ask somebody to, to help find you, to find the information for you. Absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I think you summed it up um, pretty well. Thank so, you. We're pretty much at the top of the hour. Yeah, um, it's 10 or 2 right now. I, I didn't see, I, I saw more comments. Uh, I didn't see okay. any questions. So yeah, when was... people are just chilling, taking notes. If you guys want more information, please uh, head to Home Theater Man channel. Uh, his link is in the chat. It's also in the description. Um, what's up, Technology King? Yeah, we're about to wrap it up, man. So you guys yep. just join now. You can see the replay, the yep. presentation, and all that. And yeah, check out um, his channel. You know, see some of his videos. Mm -hmm. and i think he has some great content yeah thank you and in the future you know we'll be doing you know some more streams you know definitely we'll yeah yeah some topics gaming or you know i, I, yeah. I, I like gaming and the home yeah stuff, so we'll definitely yeah there. yep so uh you have anything last to say to the audience gonna wrap some um not really um i just just uh, do research and find out what's fits you best if, in some places you can go to do or do demos for you for home theater if you want to listen to demo for someone a, a demo like crossroad they do demos find a crossroad area or like normally on best buy they can do demos for you for home theater Just, if you want to know like what it's ask a professional and stuff we'll ask one of us youtubers who's big in the home theater we don't ask can help you guys yes if you need a help a hand the the AV community is there to help. You know that's one thing I learned about it, and research is key. One thing so, I can recommend to you guys is AVS forms. Be huge help. AVS forms is absolutely amazing. If you need anything help with any home theater topic or even TV topic, they'll right on to help you. Really, was reply to you right away. Yeah, I, I co-sign AVS forms. Uh, I'm actually a part of the forums myself. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> I, awesome. I, I gotta get back on there a little bit later, see what's going on. Yeah, same with what's, here. Uh, same with me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I thank everybody for tuning in. I thank everybody who participated in the live show, the comments, um, people watching in the bushes, you know, shout out to yeah. everybody. Thank you guys for mm -hmm. all joining in. Um, shout out to everybody. Thank you guys very much. Please just like and subscribe to my channel, guys. Share my content if you guys want. Yep. Absolutely. And the information will be in the description of this live show. So peace out, everybody. And peace out, guys. Weekend. Take care, Have Thunderhawk. Good Have a good night, Thunderhawk. Take care, man. Bye, guys. Peace. Peace out. Peace out.